Prime Minister Li Hsien Lung and Mrs. Li, colleagues, past and present, friends and uh, fellow Singaporeans. Thank you, PM, for honouring us with your presence, speech later, and launch of the book. You were a stout-hearted comrade in arms and very much a part of my story. We worked well together, in fact, very well together. Hence, we were able to forge a tightly knit cabinet to keep Singapore going. As I said in the book, my success as Prime Minister was due to my generation of ministers working collegially as a team. Many of them are here. I can see Tony Tan and uh, Ching Ji Kun, you know, Nka Teng, Ping Sam, and so on. I thank you and also those who are not here today. And uh, I also want to recognize uh, one very special person, an old guard of the PAP, Hong Pang Boon, who is here. Thank you, Pang Boon, for coming. Yeah, please. Thank you. As a student, I entertained thoughts of being a writer. I wanted to influence people and be a household name. But when I entered university, reality set in. I dumped English and took up economics. But who would expect that years later, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew would urge me to write? When he gave me his book, From Third World to First, he inscribed to PM Go Chok Tong, you have to write the sequel to the Singapore story. However, even before I became Prime Minister, I had already decided not to write my memoirs. I did not keep a diary of conversations and interactions with people. A memoir will be seeing events through my eyes, but it's inevitable. Moreover, unlike Mr. Lee's fight for independence and struggle to build Singapore, meticulous notes were taken of my official meetings, sometimes even jokes too. Historians will not be bereft of materials. Actually, Mr. Lee also did not plan to write his memoirs. Ironically, it was his younger colleagues who persuaded him to do so. We felt strongly that his memoirs would hold lessons for Singapore's future. So he wrote the Singapore story. He penned these words in his book to me with my hope that the lessons need not be paid again by the present generation of Singaporeans. It was signed on 15 September 1998, a day before his 75th birthday. When I reached 75, I became more clearly aware of my own mortality and the weight of his message. Several friends had also asked me to write my memoir. Still, I said no. Then five of my senior grassroots leaders suggested an authorized biography. These long-time grassroots leaders and personal friends, Patrick Ng, Ng Hok Lai, Chua Yi Chek, Kao Pak Chow, and Tan Chet Tian, who are seated over there, would commission someone to write. The author would do the heavy lifting, the research interviews, and the writing. The idea of someone looking in from the outside and unlocking my inner memory appealed to me. Tall Order tells the story of Singapore's first political succession. It is told through my eyes and also those of my compatriots, friends, and colleagues. The intricacies of political succession are underappreciated and underestimated. The mentors are often more exasperated than they let on publicly, and the understudies are like swans, calm on the surface but paddling furiously below. We are now in the midst of another generational political transition. It requires painstaking preparation and testing in all aspects, in policies and politics, in taking hard decisions, in fighting and winning elections, in winning the minds and hearts of the people, 
in forging good relations with leaders of other countries and in bonding as a team. Accountants, architects, doctors, lawyers, and many other professionals spend years burning midnight oil to pass examinations. In addition, they must prove their integrity and competence before they get their practice license. For political leaders, character, motivation, dedication, and sense of duty are salient. Abilities are baseline requirements. I try to bring out the importance of these attributes in tall order. We entrust the fate of our country to elected leaders with our votes. Voters can only pick from what are on offer based on incomplete information and sometimes false branding, as we have seen around the world. News media and manipulated algorithms influence the outcomes. This is a major weakness in democratic elections. I was not a born politician, but I was fortunate to be mentored by Lee Kuan Yew, Go King Sui, S. Roger Rennam, Han Sui Sen, and Kim San, amongst others. I had my knuckles wrapped more than once. Only when they were satisfied that I could fly Singapore was I allowed to occupy the cockpit. My book brings out the important aspect of political mentoring and the training and experience needed to run the country. I hope my story will encourage the present and future generations of technocrats, as my colleagues and I were called once, to serve their country. Today's occasion belongs to Pei Xing Hui, the writer. I made it a subject. Several names were suggested as my possible biographers. I chose Pei Xing Hui. I like his easy to read, unpretentious questions and answers style. Pei and his Nagraf team did the research. I answered his questions candidly. We checked and verified my record of events as necessary. I asked Han Fu Kuang to be a member of Pei's team. I valued his shrewdness and insights of Singapore politics. He proved invaluable. Pei has done a good job in writing up my life till November 1990 when I became Prime Minister. I'm happy with the product. Readers' feedback is positive. There will be a volume two. <laughs> In working on this book, I was helped by Bernard To, my special assistant, and Hege Yao, my press secretary. They sat in at all the interviews. They gave useful comments. They chased up on the additional materials. They poured through many photographs to select the most appropriate ones for the book. Sometimes, what I found interesting, they did not. This reinforces my point that an authorized biography is better than an autobiography. I will have a separate book launch for charity on 21st November. This will be to raise funds for two groups of disadvantaged children, people with disabilities and disadvantaged students with poor grades. So therefore, I will not be able to sign your books today because there's a price to the signature. <laughs> <laughs> but come after 21st, you'll be all right. <laughs> Lastly, I thank the Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy for allowing the use of the whole for the book launch and the staff for their support. I chose this place because it held special memories for me. This campus was where I studied. This very hall was where I came to collect my bursary and pay my fees. So thank you once again, Prime Minister, for your support of this book project. And thank you all for honoring us with your presence. Thank you. Thank you.